Okay, welcome to Foxy's Lab. As many of you know, I have been part of the Yoga Life file for more than 11 years, and over time, I made the, de the decision to teach this wonderful discipline, and I love meditation, including many of you here at Token Smart shared a beautiful guide meditation with me. Thanks so much, Trippy Yogi, for the invitation. It was really an honor, brother. In today's experiments, we are going to try to connect pa -da -pa -pa, through meditation our mind with the feeling of calm, well-being, and happiness that the sea gives us. And so discover with this that the fusion between meditation and music connects us and is capable of moving us to another place without leaving our place. So let's get started. The first thing we are going to do in the same place where are you are. Just close your eyes and begin to feel comfortable. Begin to inhale and exhale gently and with each exhalation you will release your body and mind. Feel the powerful song of the ocean and immerse yourself in it right now. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. And when you inhale, you will imagine that you are inhaling fresh air in front of the sea and when you exhale continue to release your whole body remove external throws or noise that distract your attention if you prefer you can place your hand on your chest and feel your breath through that movement you make when expanding your chest. Now you feel how your body loosen, how your mind flows and you are already entering that incredible sensation that connects you with the sea. We are going to deep into the depths of the ocean to feel its enormous power, its energy, its strength and that I don't know what that makes us feel so small in the face of it in immense city and at the same time so happy to be there breathe inhale and exhale how do you feel? you are surely smiling right now if so, we have accomplished this wonderful experiment and I am very happy to have shared it with all of you. Now, in this great state that you are in, at this movement and this moment you are going to continue breathing and feel that you are present in that beautiful and great ocean feel 
the feeling of happiness that invades your body and mind at this moment and let yourself be carried away by these bits that connect with your meditation. Listen carefully to the lyrics of the song that I will place for you at the beginning and as the speed increase you can release and if you want to dance do it. Welcome aboard with them.
you find this little experiment that you have been part of we can really connect with everything we want just with the power of the mind and the beats or music at the same time they helped us make an incredible fusion it really was a very interesting and satisfying experience in both directions and without moving of our place isn't it cool now it's time for another epic podcast with matthew and risa this time we will have a very very special guest she's crypto carla she's creator and founder of qlip building collectibles collectibles of african art music artists actors writers dancers fashion designer etc to have their nfts on killip so let's start it <laughs>
Hey everyone, it's Matthew. Before we begin this week's show, I just want to introduce this week's sponsor, Metacast Group. Metacast Group connects companies with creators in the NFT space through a network of NFT and metaverse-focused content creators and influencers. Hear or see your ad on shows just like the Matthew and Rizzle show to amplify your reach, connect with your target audience, promote your project, and convert views into action. If you're interested in this, reach out at metaversegroup.com or follow us on Twitter at Metacast Group. Thank you, and please enjoy the show. Okay, Carla, welcome to the Matthew and Rizzle show. Hi, thank you so much for having me in this show. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. Really excited to talk more about what you're doing at Clip. Uh, but before we get into Clip and everything uh, when it comes to NFTs and Africa and crypto artists, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what you've been doing leading up to what you're doing at Clip. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so um, myself, yeah, I'm Carla. I'm also known as Carla God because uh, I'm a music artist here in Africa. I'm a rapper also. I'm a songwriter. Um, so I've been in the music space since, since 2014, right? And 2016, I dropped my first project. 2018, I dropped my second project. And I've just been, you know, doing music since then. And I got to find out about NFTs um, 2020 last year. And... Um, I, I thought to use it as a platform to sell my music and also um, sell my visual arts, right? So I'm, I'm a visual artist too. I create um, videos with poetry, you know, and stuff. So I tried doing that. And I found out that in, in the industry, there's, there's no, like the, the space is such that it, it's like, doesn't have Africa in mind, you know? You, you hear top artists in the U.S. saying, oh, I'm releasing this as an NFT. I'm going to release my NFT collectibles. But sadly, you, you don't find that in, with, some, with a lot of African artists, right? That's one. And another thing is independent artists, you know, hyper-realist, um, visual artists, you know, poets. It, it seems like the space to sell their NFTs is, is not there, or they meet some sort of roadblock. One of that roadblock is fees, right? Paying for for fees to mint your your project, to mint your um, art, and then also marketing. Some don't even know how to market, right? So some don't know how to get into the NFT space, right? And I understand what I understand that barrier because. It's like the space is filled with a lot of um, guys from Europe, from America. And then there's there's a lot of differences, right, on the platform and in culture and all. So I thought, why not create something that Africa can take advantage of and something that the world can buy from, right? So as much as we're going to, um, as much as Clip provides the opportunity for a lot of African artists to mince their works, you know, it also provides this sort of um, quality assurance, right? That collectibles you're buying on clip are actually um, worth, worth buying, right? You know, so that's, that's just a brief of, of why I started clip and what clip is about. You know, Carl, I, I love what you're doing and I love the, um, you know, effort you're putting behind it. And I agree that something yeah. that Matt and I have noticed that when we were originally getting into NFTs, the barrier to entry in terms of minting costs was very, very small. You know, it was very easy yeah. to, you know, mint NFTs for pennies and, you know, put them out yeah. into the wild. And, you know, obviously that's like clearly not the case now. Um, so I, I guess I sort of have like a two part question for you. Like, do you feel okay. like the, the minting costs have been like the biggest barrier to entry for a lot of the artists and creators that uh, you're trying to onboard? And then also like uh, I, I want to say you're on Binance Smart Chain, but I'm, I'm curious to know how yes. you like, sort of remove some of those barriers. OK, cool. Right. Yes. Yes. To answer the first question. Yes. The the biggest barrier ha has been um, um, fees, right? So uh, let me just give you a breakdown. Right? It, a lot of people really don't know when when you say um, fees, 
and you're looking at fees at oh thirty dollars, twenty dollars. That's that's some person's one week salary in Africa. You know, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, fifty dollars. That's some person's one week salary, right? That's that's like um, forty to fifty percent of an artist's income from one of their works. Right. For some artists, like for bulk of the artists in Africa. Right. So it's not a sustainable plan. Minting fees, like for minting fees to be that high. It's not it's a very big barrier for African artists. That's one of the reasons why we built on Bina Smarching so that fees would be low. Right. And in the long run, we're also going to um, have clip on other blockchains. Right. So right now we're looking at BSC. Right. So when we will launch here and, you know, actually um, build clip to a certain level on BSC, you know, we're going to go on other blockchains that have low means and fees, that have really, really minuscule transaction costs, right, to help artists mint. And then the second question about, um, okay, I think I answered the second question also, how, how uh, we're solving that. I think I did that already. Yeah, we're yeah. building on BSC, two two. and we're going to build on other blockchains. I right, cool. The uh, clip, the platform itself. Uh, do you mind sort of just going into some details, like how exactly, like you know, if, if I am an African artist and you know you've got my attention, yeah. I always wanted to do this. How does okay. someone like get involved, or like what are the next steps, uh, you, you know, for someone in the, those situations? Okay, cool. So um, say you are an independent artist and you want to meet your, your, plat- your, your art. You have to have um, a really good um, presentation. Um, how do I put it? A presentation plan in mind. Um, maybe you're a music artist. You know, Minton art wouldn't be just your music. You might have to collaborate with um, visual artists on Clip Platform and Clip actually has that feature where artists can co- collaborate on the blockchain, right? So it it solves the royalty fee issues that some other um, blockchain platforms have, right? So if you are good with music but not good with visual you know, art, designing stuff, you could collaborate with somebody and you guys can make an NFT together, right, on the platform. Another thing is... As an independent artist, you should have, just as you have a plan to market your your um, your off off chain works, right? Your off off chain art. You should also have a plan to market. Like artists should have a plan to also sell their NFTs, right? Clip would help with low fees and then um, a cataloging style for NFT collectors, right? Also for, for meme creators, because there'll be an, a, a section where people who create memes can actually put their memes on clip and announce it. So you people could actually trace their, the, the originality and ownership of a viral meme to somebody, right? So these are ways that artists could get on this. And then for mainstream artists, artists that the world already knows, you know, mainstream artists in, in Africa, this is where the, the way it works is we, we go to them, we speak to them, right? We make a presentation on clip and let them know that, okay, we can create collectibles out of certain of your projects. A very good example I keep using is Borna Boy, right? Borna Boy just won the Grammys, I think February or, or January or so, but early, early this year. And one of his tracks was like top hit. Imagine we have NFTs of Bonner Boy for that track, right? That are on the blockchain and people could actually buy them. And one other good thing is Clip is not just providing NFTs, you know, people buying NFTs and all. They are actually off-chain utilities to these NFTs. Very good example is, say you buy Bonner Boy's um, NFTs. It means that, these next concerts, probably that NFT would give you access to his merchandise and in his next concerts, right? Or VIP access to his next concert. Or maybe he drops an album. You're one of the first to receive it before the rest of the world does, right? So th- these are the kind of utilities we're bringing to the NFT collectibles on Clip. And also, our independent artists who create um, real-life works, right? could actually have NFT catalogs of those arts and then have an order in platform, an order in system. So if somebody looks at this NFT and says, 
oh, I like this. The price listed there is actually the price for both the delivery and both the products, right? So when you buy the NFT, you actually have an option to get that artwork real life delivered to you, right? So these, okay. these are the opportunities that are resilient in, in, in Clip. I'm super curious, like you mentioned a bunch of these offline sort of benefits or experiences yeah. that the NFTs can kind yeah. of activate and enable. I'm curious, like yes. what sort of infrastructure, yes. like how the redemption model or redemption system will actually work, especially like as COVID starts to dissipate or countries are able to start vaccinating like large portions of the population, like the in real life concerts, okay. meetups and everything are, are coming back. And I see a lot of people yes. who've been in the NFT space start to ask questions like, well, who are you using for in real life NFT ticketing? And that sort of redemption. Okay, um, so I'm exactly. curious yeah, yes. how you're hitting that over on your side. Okay, it's it's the it's dependent on the collaboration we have with the record labels, right? So there are a lot of really good artists in Africa, and like I said before, just as people have um, artists, independent artists have plans to market their their um, off you know off chain art, right? They should have the same for NFTs for their NFT arts, right? Now we have that platform for record labels, so it's such that. If you're an, a mainstream artist, your next album should also have an NFT strategy, right? And that NFT strategy includes utility. So if you're going to have an album, you're going to drop an album, you know that next you're going to have a listening party. After a listening party, you're going to have concerts, you're going to go on tours, right? The, the, the NFTs that will be released should give the holders access to these various activities, right? So this is going to be integrated with, with the the record labels that we would have. We can we can actually mint collectibles of these artists without having things like this in place. So it's all part of the policies and clip for, for minting collectibles of mainstream artists. It has to work with the record labels. Curious to know like what's been the reception like you know for example you were saying you know you identify some you know big artists or like creators who are doing cool things you approach them yeah. with your business model it, does it take yeah. like uh, a lot of education for them to understand like the value of nfts or do a lot of them like get it right away or what's been the reception you know uh, as you've approached different people Oh, a lot of them don't get it right away. <laughs> I trust have to, me, we, um, we experience um, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't they don't get it right away. You know, you have to explain what blockchain is, and then you have to explain how because they always ask the same question. If if I could take a screenshot of it, then why is it valuable? And I'm like, originality, because you can <laughs> prove that you take a screenshot doesn't mean you own it. I mean, come on. The same thing with what uh, Gary V said. He said, you could draw Shrek and take a screenshot of Shrek, but the ownership of that character goes back to, to Disney and they're making the money, right? So it, it's about ownership and being able to provide utility aside from what is known now. Because when you look at it, five to 10 years, NFT is, NFT, NFT is going to be... It's, 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 you can mention data or content creation without mentioning, which you have mentioned NFTs, you know, in five to 10 years. So I have to educate them and let them know that this is, this is an opportunity to get into the future, especially because we're in Africa. Not a, a lot of artists are not doing this, right? The only artists I've heard who's talking about you know, getting the NFT way is MI, right? One of Africa's top um, rappers. And we are already in talks right to see how we can put um, his content on clip and actually make collectibles of his content right so it's they don't get it they don't get it straight away i i we have to educate and you know educate and show them the business model and help them understand why it would work right before they say okay carla yeah let's let's give this a try so in terms of like the target creators that you want to go after and, and feature on clip, is okay. it the musicians yeah. that you want to f focus on first and then kind of in tandem 
pair them up with the visual artists or like, for example, um, my first exposure with uh, a crypto artist from Africa would be Oshinachi. Like he's been in the game for, yeah. for years at this point and he's yeah. such an inspiration. Yes. Like how he creates yes. using Microsoft Word and his story and, and the, everything about it is just inspiring. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious about that yeah. sort of roadmap and how you're thinking about the music side of things with the visual art side of things heading forward. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're getting musicians first on it because we actually want to reach the end users, their fans, right? Fans of MI, fans of Bonoboy, fans from all around Africa that they have. We're going to help them say, okay, you could buy my NFTs, own my NFTs on such and such platform, and they're going to. Be- we're going to have limited editions of the NFTs and people who own them would have access to, you know, their various content and various um, um, off-chain, off-chain, um, what's, what's the word? Opportunities or advantages, right? Over people who don't own their, their NFT. So we're working first with the music artists because we need a lot more traction than we have now. We have traction, but we need a lot more. And, Music is big in Africa. So if we have the music artists, we can then begin collaborations with others. And besides, it's not only music. We're going to work with a movie artists also. The film industry is going to get, get in on this because they love use cases for them. They love use cases for photographers. Africa has a lot of really good top photographers and lots of other content creators. We're also looking at um, literary giants, the likes of Wola Shoinka, the likes of Chima Manda. You know, these are people who their books, their, their, their literary works have gone around the world. But first, we're starting with the music artists because we need to make an announcement and we need to make it big. That's it. Yo, I love it. Carl, I'd be interested. So when I first like came across you, it was actually like around New Year's Eve, a little bit before that, you had put out the the drizzle yeah. rap. And I was like, oh my God, if I could like <laughs> this lady to rewrite this one. Uh, but but so you, you were like r- rapping about like a specific block on the blockchain. And, and I feel like, you know, we're way ahead of the yeah. curve, like even before this space blew up, like you obviously had like an in-depth yeah. knowledge about crypto about nfts so i'm just sort of interested and to try and pull off a project with like the scope of what you're talking about i mean you really have to know like this space inside out which which you clearly do so uh, i'm just interested to know like how you you know stumbled into crypto in the first place and you know byproduct of that like nfts like okay yeah what's your background uh in this space in general Okay. All right. So I, I got into crypto in 2017, but I, I didn't take it seriously till 2019. Right. Yeah. So 2017, I started with Steemit. I, I love to write. So I was writing on Steemit, right? I was writing articles and earning various um, SBD tokens and, and all that stuff. And then um, Steemit wasn't doing so well. So I left it alone for a while. Well, I was in various spaces, but I didn't really get what they were talking about, right? When I asked the question, they would always go, D-Y-O-R, do your own research. And I didn't do my research rightly because I kept asking what <laughs> instead of why. I kept asking, what is Bitcoin? Okay. okay? I, I couldn't understand. This is how you should apply it, right? And I think this goes to newbies. Find out why, you know, rather than just what. Because when you find out why, you can relate the what to a purpose, to an action that you should take. So I, I just went around that till 2019 when I started really doing research and understanding why I should do this. And I started making making plans, right? Started making plans and taking up some, some courses and teaching people also about um, Bitcoin, about cryptocurrency, why it is important that we're all getting on it and start buying, you know, now and holding for long-term purposes, right? But then in 2020, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, right? So I'm born again and we have the Holy Spirit, right? In 2020, Q4, the Holy Spirit said, research about NFTs. I, I wasn't looking at NFTs. Before now, the the highest I'd heard about NFTs was what's happening with EOS blockchain crypto kit was it crypto kitties or oh, no crypto kitties was on Ethereum one one NFT that that 
choked the, the the blockchain and made them, I think it was EOS blockchain or, or, or so, that made transactions stop working. That, that was the only idea I had about NFTs, right? That, that, well, that was just it. So the Holy Spirit said, Carla, research about NFTs. And I started my research and I saw that it was so much big. I mean, I used like three months to research on what NFTs are and how, you know, how they can be applied in various aspects other than just art, right? That you, in, in checking that out, I even got to find out that NFTs could be used in the legal industry, right? You know, and, and other aspect, but that was how I started. It was just divine direction. I, I acted on an instruction I got from the Holy Spirit. And once I was done with my research, I'm like, no, I got to build something for Africa. I have to build something that a lot of people are not doing now and something that can benefit a lot of Africans. So here, here we are. That's crazy. I actually, I mean, Rizzo and I, we got our start over on Scent, which is like, I don't know, the Ethereum version of Steemit. And I'd like to think like okay. a much, much cooler vein, <laughs> throwing shade on, on Steemit since day one. Um, but to your point, the promise of NFTs and what they can be used for is just pretty mind blowing outside of art, right? Yeah. And I feel like there's this yeah. huge energy in the creative industry when it comes to like yeah. gaming, virtual worlds, music, of course, writing, all, all the above, right? And how they can take NFTs and apply them and for like really, really insanely creative and, and inspiring purposes. But there's also like this tension between the demand side and the supply side. And you have all these projects okay. and artists and creators that are coming in and trying to use NFTs and in some senses, like flooding the space. So how sure. are you able to kind of keep that, that tension and balance? And especially when it comes to like an emerging market uh, and bringing Africa yes. online to NFTs, like how do you make sure you yes. don't flood the market too early with awesome content <laughs> and overwhelming? Okay, yeah. Okay, the key word here is utility. That's the key word. So if you can figure out how to make these NFTs useful, both on-chain and off-chain, you get the market. Because when we think about it, um, people don't want to buy something that they would not use often, right? So utility, that's just it. So if I buy this NFT, I know that it can, it can help me get something off the blockchain. It can help me get something in real life, right? That's it. Then the next thing is scarcity, okay? So we, we actually, on, on, on clip, our collectibles are going to be really scarce. So if we have artists that we are dropping their collectibles, there's a def definite number that we are dropping, you know, of this artist. There's a definite number there's a definite time frame, you know, to, to drop them to happen in circulation so that the market doesn't just get flooded with a lot of products and nobody's buying. So th those are our two key um, um, ways to keep um, demand up. Yo, love it, Carla. Uh, just out of curiosity, ha have you, like, are you in the works of onboarding anyone, like, currently? Or are you, like, essentially, like, taking this around and trying to get a sense of who is most interested in it? Or, like, who do you see being, like, I, you know, I know you're targeting musicians first, but do you have, like, a short list of, like, who's going to be first on the platform? Or are, are they yes. already done and a few drops out there? Or like, what's the what's the short term roadmap uh, look like in terms of who's going to be putting out stuff? Okay, yes, we do. Uh, I have my eye on Tenny, the entertainer. I have my eye on MI, because I'm a rapper. So I kind of want, want lots of rappers to be here too. I have my eye on MI, um, Black Bones, AQ. Right. And praise also. I had actually had a discussion with one of our agents today on us getting to praise. Right. Um, I have, and then there's an artist. He's a visual artist, a, vis a hyper realist artist. His name is Mayo Arts. Right. So also have my eye on Mayo, Mayo Arts. Right. So those are the ones that we are currently reaching out to at the moment that I can say, yeah, you, you're definitely going to find their works first on, on quick. When you were like setting up this project in the first place, like, do you 
see this project like having inter- any big competitors out there or do you it, it, on the opposite side of the coin like would you say this is modeled after like any specific uh product or platform that you're just you know trying to adapt to your specific use case or you know what what do you see out there that's like similar to what you've got going on okay at the moment i'll, I'll say the competitor is uh, music distribution companies at first, right? Because because of music, basically distribution companies for um, creators, right? For people who who are mainstream artists, because they could ask. Um, they're telling me to create NFTs, but distribution companies are already paying me upfront to to provide my content to them. So why should I put that to provide my content to you? Right. So they are one of the, the competitors. And then for for other uh, our business model is it is not based on anything that is currently available at all. Not it's not yet based on, on any. So I can't I can't really see a a um, let's say a, a platform that's already doing what we are doing. Because I did some research, and most of the platforms they, they focus on, you know, visual artists, a little bit of musicians, because a lot of musicians haven't really gotten on this, and um, um, poets, poetry, right? But we've created, we've created uh, a system and a process to make it better than what's already available. Honestly, so for now, I, I could say the direct competition I see are music distribution companies. That, that's it. And then one of the things I'm, I'm curious about, um, obviously, utility, I think, is a real, real interesting angle to approach for NFTs and, and this sort of content uh, to unlock continued ongoing value. Um, but another like buzzword in the, commu- in the space is community around the individual creators. And I think you can kind of pair yeah. the utility with community, yes. like unlocking exclusive chats yes. and things like that. But how do you think about community when it comes to the artists and creators that would be releasing on clip? Like what are some interesting examples of community engagement that you've seen? Okay. Um, we, we have a meme contest right now, a meme and sticker contest. And the, the, um, the response of having quite cool, right? Our community is still new to this idea. They are used to, oh, you just meet and sell your energy on the platform, right? But now they're hearing utility and they're wondering how would that work? How, you know, they're asking lot, lots of questions. And now they're hearing that, oh, we're going to have poets on, poets have NFTs on the platform. Oh, we're going to have movie um, characters on, on the platform. Movie indus- the movie industry is actually going to be part of this. They get, you're hearing that fashion is going to be on this also, and they don't get it yet. So for community, we're still educating. We get questions every day. We have over 30,000 people um, in our Telegram group at the moment. We get questions on a daily basis on, okay, how is this going to work? What's up? What do we do after now and all that stuff? So at the moment, we're, we're building the community. We are educating them, right? And then another way that they they are really helpful is when we actually have collectibles, it is really mostly our community that would be able to own them quickly, quicker than others because they sometimes get the announcement firsthand because they're an announcement channel, you know, and they are on our Twitter. Then another way also that we're going to do this is is with um, email marketing. So we have an email strategy to help people, you know, know when there are drops, just like what NBA Top Shots do, right? So when there's a drop that's coming, you get an email, you know, and then you wait in line and all that stuff. So we're going to have that also. But basically, people who are in our community will most likely get first-hand information than people who are not. That's awesome. Carla, what... Are there any, like, do you have any dates or like launches like upcoming that you can, you know, sort of put on the calendar or or, like people should be looking out for or yeah, what's coming up? Okay. Yeah. um, Our private sale is actually tomorrow, which is the 19th of um, May and we'd have our ideal on the 20, between 22nd, right to 25th or depending on the ideal platform, but basically 
month, basically by the end of this month, we should be done with all sales, right? So once the tokens are sold, it will take us um, six to eight weeks to, to create the better phase of the project, right? So in six to eight weeks, say that should be um, July, first week, second week of July. So that's when we'd have a better a better launch. And then we're going to launch with collectibles of our various artists on the platform and also um, have a minting feature where independent artists can mint their works on our platform. So that's those are the dates at the moment. One of the things that uh, we always like to ask people on the podcast, especially who have been in the NFT scene for a little while, like yourself, are there any like specific kinds of like NFTs or collectibles that you've been uh, collecting on the side or anything like that? Or what, what's in your crypto wallet these days? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I have m- most of my NFTs are basically on BSC, Binance Smart Chain. So there are these guys that I follow and I buy their NFTs, MBM Portraits. Right, they are on. I think Air. Is it Air, Air NFTs? Right, on. I think you when you open your trust wallet, you find them there. Air NFTs or Air Arts, or something Air. So this guy, they're these guys that have a collectible of, of creations, and I usually just collect their artworks. You know, they call MBM portraits. And then apart from that, I have some. Um, okay, you know, I have I have Drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I have drizzle. Yes. I have um, some <laughs> some cake, some cake NFTs, right? So I don't think I'll be selling anytime soon. I, I just like to own them. That's all. So th- those are the ones I have at the moment. That's cool. And sort of like a related question: uh, Are there any other or any yeah. like artists? As a collector, I always like to scoop up new up and coming artists. That's sort of like where I like to, to focus. Yeah. Do you have any artists or musicians that are putting out NFTs already um, that we should kind of orient our attention and collecting to? Yeah, that's that's the issue. I'm not I'm not seeing them yet. Um, hopefully, you would see them on clip because actually I've I've tried searching and I'm not seeing them yet. I particularly really like Tenny. I like Two Face Idibia, but you don't get to see their NFTs anyway. Yes, I like Yami Alade. So I'm, I'm looking at these guys and saying definitely we're going to have collectibles of these guys on our platform so the world can buy from, right? So you, you just mentioned it, which, which shows you that a lot of other artists, uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of other NFT collectors are actually mentioning it also and looking, okay, who are the artists in Africa who could, who could buy their, their works? And it's like there's no platform, you know, to, to service that. And that's why Clip is here. So we're doing this. Got it. Well, Carla, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today about Clip. Really excited yeah, to see so the, the further progress here and what you're creating here for artists and creators to hop on and, and use in the African market. Um, yeah, and just thank you for taking the time and keep on creating. Yeah, thank you so much too for having me. I'm really grateful. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Carla. It's a blast. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this week's show. Before we go, I just want to remind you once again about this week's sponsor, Metacast Group. Metacast Group connects companies with creators in the NFT space through a network of NFT and metaverse-focused content creators and influencers. So if you want to hear or see your ad on shows, just like the Matthew and Rizzo show, to amplify your reach, connect with your target audience, promote your project, and convert views into action, reach out to us at metacastgroup.com or follow us at Metacast Group on Twitter. Thank you and see you all the next episode. Well, well, we have fan what amazing podcast today. Thank you very much, guys, for being part of this first edition of Foxy's Lab. I'm so grateful, y'all. 
came and participate of this experience. Love you all so much. See ya at the next Wednesday. Keep an eye at the weekly events channel for the upcoming events. Don't miss it. Bye. Peace, love, and whipsy. Fox is out. Mwah.